overflows how to emerge from identity crisis both love and enlightenment evolve out of the same root love is micro a drop fulfillment within existence on the other hand is overflowing love harmony and oneness each moment when the fragrance and beauty of love within overflows and merges with the whole or existence this presence this state is known as enlightenment just as the chemical composition of drop and ocean is the same so too the intrinsic quality of love and enlightenment remains the same love is the union a way to experience bliss or anand or gaze when two forms interact journey of love begins through form unless it reaches the formless realm bliss of this union is not experienced between form and formless is identity crisis enlightenment is also taste of love or bliss with the whole or existence this has two steps drop merging in the ocean and ocean merging into the drop when someone transcending narrow boundaries of selfish egocentric realm begins to live for transformation of human consciousness his light eternal manifests awakening to wake up from deep slumber and kindle the spark of divinity in the seeker in this process identity crisis is the only obstruction just as to experience bliss of male female relation both have to strip completely of all egocentric dis identities so to for enlightenment you have to realize truth that your real existence is beyond all identities this realization brings awareness awareness becomes your moment to moment consciousness living by this consciousness each moment or travels traversing through life's road one attains to bliss or anand you are then sat chit anand sat is truth chit is consciousness and when you know truth you live by truth then bliss is the outcome enlightenment is the taste of one's formless existence buddha calls it as enlightenment you exist as a form you are unaware of your formless existence you live within and guided by your own formful experiences nirvana or enlightenment means formless the nirvana shat kam composed by adi shankar is towards this you do not want to be either this nor that if you do not want to be this nor that then what do you want to be your mind cannot understand this because your mind is mind always wants something if i say i do not want to do this i do not want to do that you should think oh something superior not supi not super oh no emptiness not emptiness nothingness not nothingness that is what is being conveyed through this particular chant neither this nor that sutra emphasizes on our true self as sat chit anand ever existing 
ever blissful consciousness and new bliss. Generally, this true self is covered by bio, psycho, social self. Three layers, biological, psychological and social. We always attribute to one of them as our real self. Biological attributions like I am strong, I am short, I am fat, I am tall, etc. Psychological attributions are like I am genius, I am dull, I am emotional, I am rational, etc. Social attributions like I am a father, I am a teacher, I am a doctor, I am a politician, I am a Hindu, I am a Muslim, I am a Christian, I am American, I am German. These all create identity crisis. In this composition, Shankar explains how the bio, socio, social self, self senses cover, covers our true self and how to overcome this. This is the near shore of awakening, near shore of awakening. The other shore, the other shore happens on its own accord to Buddha and Shankar. However, according to Sufism, this comes through the Sheikh, who is outwardly a form and inwardly he is not aware of form, formful existence, emptiness and dwells in that state. This composition is composed of six stanzas of four lines each. I will recite and explain the meaning. Mano buddha ahankaru chittaninaham Mano buddha ahankaru chittaninaham Na cha shrotra jivve, na cha prana netre Na cha shrotra jivve, na cha prana netre Na cha vyombhumir na tejo na vayu Na cha vyombhumir tejo na vayu Chidanand rupaha shivoham shivoham Chidanand rupaha shivoham shivoham Mano buddha ankar chitta nina Mano buddha ankar chitta nina Na cha shrotra jivve, na cha prana netre, na cha vyom abhumir, na tejo na vayu. Na cha vyom abhumir, na tejo na vayu, chidanand rupa shivoham shivu. Mind has four aspects. Mind, intellect, storehouse of the memory and ego sense. Shankar denies all these. Neither am I the mind. You have to understand the distinction between brain and mind. Brain is the part of the body. Every child is born with a fresh brain, but not with a fresh mind. Mind is a layer of conditioning around the consciousness. You will not remember it. That is why this is, this is a discontinuity. If even for a single moment you become aware that you are not mind there, but I am. 
you have reached a deep core of truth then it will be easy to drop the mind you are not the mind otherwise how can you drop yourself the identification has to be dropped first that you are not identified with the mind then the mind can be dropped as long as you are identifying it you want to drop your desire for the car unless you disidentify yourself you cannot just drop that when you are a watcher on the hill and mind is left deep down in the darkness of valley when you are on the sunlit peaks just a pure witness seeing watching but not getting identified with anything good or bad sinner or saint this or that in that witnessing all questions dissolve mind melts evaporates you are left as pure being just a pure existence a breathing a beating a beating of the heart utterly in the moment no past no future hence no present either to know inner peace we need to move into a different region from the mental that of consciousness from mental to consciousness in other words we need to move from thinking to being for that we do not need to control tame or stop the mind but to understand it and familiarization with it is important and familiarize ourselves with the nature of the mind watch your own mind for a few moments and you will see that it is like a conveyor belt of ideas theories arguments prejudices doubts beliefs dreams imaginations aspirations and the whole gamut of feelings from joy to despair in same in some respect mind is like a child it is always on the go it it is also impulsive inquisitive constantly wanting your imagination and to be part of whatever you are doing if you are dealing with a very active child as an intelligent patient you do not try to stop the energy you understand and its constant movement and its curiosity are natural but they can be channelized into some aspect of creativity or physical activity even that is just running around the house you can do something similar when your mind is overactive redirect the energy that fuels the mind rather than trying to suppress the constant stream of thoughts redirect the energy that fuels them for example maybe you may be ruminating about an important interview or feeling anxious about some test results when you become aware of how maniac your mind is only making the situation worse find a more useful outlet for some of the energy for example running swimming playing tennis or dancing even cleaning can provide an effective and practical release of the mental and the physical tensions if your mind is active but your physical energy is very low if you are in pain or confined to bed you need another method another option the method is gibberish it is simple and effective it is speaking nonsense sounds and maybe something you remember from your childhood nor the intelligence of ego nor a storehouse of memory nor intellect shankar goes on denying all these